Hey everyone, tonight's project is making little stone crosses. So I'll be cutting these out on a saw and then tumbling them and I'll show you the whole process so if you want to make some yourself you can. So I'm going to start with uh, stenciling the crosses onto the rocks. Uh, this is a stencil a friend of mine made for me on a machine called a Cricut, which is a machine scrapbookers use to just cut out little shapes out of paper and stuff. And so uh, I'm going to just start tracing out some crosses. Uh, this is a rock that I, out in the sun when I found this rock, I thought it was pink. Now it just sort of looks gray and white. Uh, it's got some neat stripes on it though. There's a very slight pink hue if you get off in the sun, but not very much. So uh, looks like I'm only going to get one cross out of this one, so I try to put it in a way where the, the stripes are going at an angle. I think they look better that way, so I'll just sort of put it on there. It's nice to have something transparent you can work with so you can see the rock around. So, let's do this. And that's good enough. And I'm just going to go through and do that with all these rocks. So I have some pink, uh, or orangish, pinkish kind of quartzite, I think. I don't know what that rock is. I'm not even sure if it's a very good rock, but I'm going to make some crosses out of it. I also don't know what this is. Uh, it has some cracks in it, so I've got to be careful when I'm tracing these that I avoid the cracks. Like you can see, maybe this is a better one. This one's very cracked. Got cracks here, cracks there, crack up there. Uh, I always check the front and the back. So I can get one cross right in here and the rest of this will be garbage. Uh, over here I have some Unikite, uh, one of my favorite rocks. And uh, I'm not sure if this is Unikite or not. Usually Unikite is either speckly or kind of smeared colors. This one's got very straight lines in it, uh, so I'm not sure. That's another Unikite, a little different color. Uh, this is Unikite-ish, but uh, kind of the wrong color for Unikite, but it's got the same sort of streaks and stuff in it. Should make some nice crosses. So, I'll get these marked up and then I'll show you how to do the saw step. Before I start cutting, I thought I'd show you the difference between two saws and something you need to be aware of before you cut shapes like crosses or anything that has any kind of a concave part to it. Uh, this saw over here, the arbor of the saw, uh, the, the shaft that the blade runs on here, is right in line with the table. Uh, and that's what you want for this sort of thing. So where the blade hits the table, it hits it at a 90 degree angle. So you got your table, the blade, and there's a 90 degree angle right there. That's a good saw for cutting these sorts of things. Over on this saw, uh, this arbor is below the table. I don't know if you can see back there, but the arbor is down lower, so less than half of the blade is sticking up. And where the blade meets the table, this is larger than a 90 degree angle. So here's the problem with that. Here's a rock that I just caught, cut on that second saw. And the top of the rock looks fine, but underneath you can see where uh, the blade cuts deeper on the bottom than on the top. So you get this uh, overcut right here and you don't want that in your crosses. So once again that's because the blade uh, like sticks out farther here than it does up here. So that's going to cut deeper into the rock than it does here. So if you have a saw like this, uh, it's not a big problem. What you need to do is build yourself a little ramp like that uh, so that the ramp then hits the blade at a 90 degree angle. So that blade will work just fine. And this is a saw I used before I got the other saw. So I just made this little ramp and I put a clamp on it right here to hold it down and then I just run all my rocks down the ramp. On this one, I don't need the ramp. So I like this saw a little bit better. Before I cut anything, I thought I'd point out that I'm using some safety equipment. Uh, I wear earbuds. Uh, these have rubber tips. They go right inside your ear and they block out quite a bit of the outside noise. I like to listen to podcasts while I work. Uh, I wear safety glasses. And then maybe most importantly, or at least as important, is protecting your lungs. Uh, you do not want rock dust in your lungs. So when I use this, there's a little bit, bit of mist that flies off it, and if the mist is getting on my skin and in my hair a little bit, I can feel it when I'm done. Um, I know I'm going to be breathing that in unless I protect myself, so I wear this. Or anytime it's uh, a dry work and there's dust in the air, I always wear this also.
So be careful. So the only real trick to this is when you're cutting these, cut off the ends of the cross first, across the arms here, and then come back in later and cut out those inside corners. Uh, the reason that's important is because if you cut out the inside corner first, there won't be any material back here. So when you come across cutting there, there's nothing to support that cut as you come off the end of the rock, and the corners tend to chip off when you do that. So by cutting here first, you've got rock to support it across, when you go across. Then when you cut in here later, uh, that arm supports it. And when you cut in here, this arm supports it. And you never end up uh, chipping the corners that way. If you do chip a corner, because um, I learned this the hard way, uh, so originally I'd cut out whichever order I wanted and once in a while I chip a corner off. I just come back and I cut off all the corners, kind of round them off, and I make it just look like a cross that was supposed to have rounded off corners. Uh, I don't like them as well that way and they, they take longer, but they still look kind of cool and some people probably prefer them that way. When I'm cutting here, uh, please don't be worried about my fingers. This blade is really, it's a diamond blade, uh, but it's really quite smooth on the edge. This doesn't feel rough at all. Uh, this doesn't have teeth on it like a saw, uh, a wood saw does, so it's not cutting the same way. Instead it grinds through the rock, but the diamonds are so fine on there that I can run this, here I'll show you, uh, I can run it with, uh, um, you know, going and I can just put my finger right on it, it doesn't cut at all. If I hit my fingernail, it would cut my fingernail, but it won't cut my skin. So I'll show you.
All right, I spent the last couple of nights cutting out uh, crosses here. I think this is a new record for me. Uh, there are 75 crosses cut out. Uh, it took me, I spent about a couple hours, two nights in a row, uh, much more than a couple hours and my back starts to get sore. I should probably have my saw up a little bit higher so I'm not leaning over so much. Uh, but anyhow, uh, these are all ready to go in the tumbler. So I'm gonna use the Lotto tumbler. Uh, this is a vibratory tumbler and Vibratory tumblers are really good at uh, smoothing rocks, but not at shaping them. So they'll shine them up, but the shape will stay generally the same. So that's just perfect for these, because I'd like these to come out still looking like crosses and not all uh, lopsided and stuff. Uh, it does take the sharp edges off, uh, so those will just be slightly rounded. Uh, these will go in with ceramic media like this, and I'll probably do about half of these at a time. I'd probably push it there. I should probably do about a third at a time, but I think I can get away with a half. If you put too many in, they stick together. Uh, they tend to stick like this and then just sort of rub like that. It's better if they're moving around a little bit more. So uh, every once in a while, I'll open it up and look at them and take some apart. Uh, just a little tip for you if you're using a lotto tumbler. Uh, it has this little knob thing on the bottom, so it, it doesn't stand up very well. So if you just take a piece of PVC and it makes a great little stand, and a canning funnel fits just perfectly in the top of there. So what I'm going to do is take these over to the sink. Uh, I'll fill this with water and when I dump these in here with the water in, uh, they'll fall down a little more gently and not get all dinged up. Uh, and then I'll, I'll put the ceramic in with it and I'll put it on the tumbler for two days and that's in 220 grit. And then we'll switch to 500 grit uh, for a couple of days and then I'll go to polish for a couple of days and they'll be done. So uh, let's go over to the sink. All right, I'm putting 220 grit silicon carbide in here. I'm going to do two tablespoons. I'll check back in a couple days. These have been running for about 48 hours now. Don't look like they're sticking together too bad. So time to move them to the 500 stage. All right, it's time to run these in 500 grit aluminum oxide for three days. And they'll also get a tablespoon of borax to help thicken up the slurry and carry the grit around a little better.
These have been in 500 grit aluminum oxide for three days. And they already have a good shine on them. Here's how they look now. But I'll put them in uh, polish for a couple of days just to make sure I get the best shine possible. So, two more days and they'll be done. Alright, for the last stage we get a tablespoon of borax. And then one half teaspoon of aluminum oxide polish. We'll let those run for two days and they'll be done. They're done. So uh, I have 42 that are done, 31 that still need to go in the next batch. And I thought I'd show you the difference between tumbled and uh, before they're tumbled. So here's the same kind of rock. Uh, this was in the tumbler for a week. It spent three day, or two days in 220 grit and then three days in 500 grit and then two days in polish. Uh, it's all aluminum oxide. Uh, and since it's a vibratory tumbler, it comes out the same shape. Uh, this, the edges are rounded just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but they're slightly rounded. Um, but it's basically the same shape. If you did this in a rotary tumbler, uh, this would come out more rounded, uh, more lumpy maybe. Uh, it's just gonna, it's gonna take more of a beating in there and not turn out to be quite the same shape. So the rotary, or the vibratory tumbler is the way to go. Um, if you want a description or a list of all the different things that I did, I'll put it in the description so you can see exactly what I did in each step, how much stuff I used, and, and all that. Um, so you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with all these little crosses. Uh, they go to three main places. Uh, the first is my priest. Uh, I give a bunch of them to him, and he gives them to people who uh, maybe are struggling with something. Uh, some sort of a problem in their life. Uh, a lot of times he said it's a son or a daughter who's kind of gone astray. Um, and he gives them a little cross uh, to remember that that's their cross to bear in life. That's their little suffering to do. Um, and helps them remind them of that and to offer that up to Jesus. And uh, so he takes some of them. Uh, I also, we have a Bible study at our church and I'm in a small group of about 10 or 12 guys. Uh, usually during Lent, I bring in a, a little box of these and I pass them around to everybody who takes one uh, just to kind of carry around in their pocket or whatever. Uh, and then uh, the other place I take them is Olivet Book and Gift, which is a, a store here in town. And they sell them there in their store, so uh, all these are going there. Uh, I'm not sure where these will go, but it um, depends on who needs them next. So I just keep everybody supplied the best I can. So uh, anyhow, that's what I'll be doing with them, and uh, thanks for watching my video.